So I mind-numbingly scrolling through TikTok when I see this video of Ryan Garcia. Ugh. And my first thought is, well, he's a little late to the trend, plus, I don't know, kind of cringe. And then it hits me. Holy shit. How did I not know that Ryan Garcia had a fight coming up? I mean, L marketed marketing team, honestly. Because if I had to find out through TikTok, then they must be doing something wrong. But as lame as the, his TikToks were, let's get to why I'm really here. And that's to talk about Ryan Garcia's return to boxing. Because if you didn't know by now, Ryan has a hell of a lot of ups and downs in his very short career. Let's just start off on the nice summer day of June 9th, 2016 where Garcia matched up against Edgar Mesa in Tijuana for his first professional bout. And I think it's safe to say that Edgar lasts longer in bed than he does in the ring, since Edgar got his ass knocked out in one round, okay? TKO to be exact. <laughs> anyway, Oscar De La Hoya saw the fight and was like, damn, that 17 year old looking nice low key. So let me snatch him up real quick, which is exactly what he did, because Ryan Garcia would sign with Golden Boy Promotions in November of that same year. And now that Oscar had his little toy, it seemed as though he wanted to show him off because Garcia would announce his fight with Golden Boys to be on December 16th of that same year, literally a month, that's it. And on the 16th, Ryan would match up against Jose Martinez at the forum. And he'd end up putting Martinez's ass to sleep by the second round. And for the next three years, Ryan would grind his soul off in the ring by winning 11 straight fights in that time period, adding five more KOs and three plus TKOs to his resume. But he wouldn't truly rise up the ranks until his fight against Romero Duno in the fall of 2019, where he was the co-main event with Ganelo versus Sergey Kovalev at the MGM. And the reason this was so big for Ryan is because Garcia defeated Duno with the first round knockout, capturing the WBC Silver Lightweight title. Which was one of his first major titles by the way, so good for him. And things only continued to get better for the Canelo prodigy, as he'd match up versus Francisco Fonseca in an attempt to retain his previously mentioned WBC Silver Lightweight title which he did with ease, if I say so myself, because on Valentine's of 2020, while most people were falling in love, Garcia had Fonseca falling face first into the ground as he knocked him out in the first round. <laughs> but due to COVID taking the world by storm only a month after the Fonseca fight, Ryan would have to wait nearly an entire year to step back in the ring. And this COVID break seemed to have shook up Ryan just a bit because in his next fight versus Luke Campbell, first fight back by the way, Garcia would receive his first ever knockdown of his professional career by the second round. But it seemed as though Campbell couldn't go for the kill because Bar Garcia pulled himself together and thugged it out. And by the seventh round, Ryan finally woke up and delivered a fight ending body shot that would earn him a vacant WBC interim lightweight title. And in April of 2021, Dazen would announce that their superstar prodigy, Ryan Garcia, would be set to fight featherweight champion Javier Fortuna, with the winner having an opportunity to fight for the chance at being the WBC lightweight champion. But Garcia's life would turn upside down on the tragic day of April 24th, 2021, when he decided to withdraw for the fight for mental health reasons which I truly commend for him doing since it's, it's not easy to battle your inner demons, especially at the cost of your career. And as you probably guessed, stepping away from that major fight definitely came with some big ass consequences, with the largest being the fact that he was stripped of his recently earned WBC interim lightweight title. But Garcia would attempt a quick comeback by agreeing to fight Joseph Diaz in late November of that same year. Though tragedy would come for Mr. Ryan yet again, as only seven days, that's right, seven days after the fight was announced, it'd been revealed that Garcia suffered a hand injury and the fight with Diaz would have to be postponed. But this is when the redemption arc finally began, as Garcia got his shit together and on February 22nd, he'd compete versus an old Emmanuel to go in more of a bounce back match 
since he had been missing from the sport for nearly a year. And this turned out to be a great decision as Ryan went the full 12 verse to go and won unanimously at the judges table. That fight's cool and all, but the reason I'm making this video now and not back in February is because of what happened on what's going to happen on July 16th when Garcia will have his first real fight back since the mental health break versus Javier Fortuna. And if that name sounds familiar, you're not crazy because Fortuna was the man that Ryan was supposed to box more than a year ago. And if it isn't obvious by now, of course I'm rooting for Ryan Garcia. I mean, talk about a guy who's fought through adversity. And honestly, I could see him being a gritty underdog heading into the fight, especially since Javier is coming off an impressive bounce back fight after losing to Joseph Diaz. Anyway, I hope that this fight can really put Garcia his career back onto a good trajectory because this is probably my favorite fighter since Canelo Alvarez which I'm just now realizing is pretty ironic and yeah I know this is kind of different from my other content but sports is sports so I don't really care and if y'all were expecting another NBA video well right now Kevin Durant is cucking the NBA content by putting all of free agency on hold until the Nets come to a decision on what to do with him. So once you see that Kevin Durant trade toe, you'll be seeing a lot more basketball videos. But for now, we'll hold off on that whole triple dribble stuff. Anyway, deuces.